This episode was sponsored by Audible. Teleport every one of your cells into the next room and you'd leave a strange shadow behind. A ghostly cloud of single-celled creatures that live on and inside your body. Your microbiome. Zoom in and we can see that this cloud is made of bacteria, fungi, and others. Like these in the gut that digest fiber and give us nutrients we can't make ourselves, or, or these that munch our skin oils and give off that characteristic body odor. Even the film of plaque that we brush off our teeth was put there by microbes. You're teeming with microscopic life, or rather, you were. Without you to sustain and contain it, your microbiome is now rapidly dying. And without it over in the next room, so are you. From your first day on Earth, these microbes have helped build, protect, and feed you. And on your last day, they'll be the first to take you apart. When multicellular life arrived on Earth, microbes had been here for more than one and a half billion years. They were first. So naturally, every complex creature to come after, from jellyfish to dinosaurs, termites to trees, koalas to us, has had to learn to work with them. But what happens when we try to live without them? You might think fewer bugs means fewer diseases, but it's not that simple. Cleaner isn't always healthier. Which bug we meet and when we encounter it makes a huge difference in who we become. In the 1970s, a Canadian doctor noticed that local indigenous children were less likely to get asthma and allergies than the white population, despite getting more infections. Later, a British doctor saw less hay fever allergy in children who had older siblings. It seemed like kids who grew up in more hygienic environments ended up with immune systems wired to attack stuff like pollen and household chemicals as if they were dangerous germs. This this is the hygiene hypothesis. It says growing up around a less diverse bunch of microbes can make our immune systems kind of jumpy and nervous later in life. Today, our food is safer, our water is treated, we have smaller families trading fewer germs, and we even live around fewer animals. One scientist analyzed household dust and found that homes with cats or dogs have more varied microbes. As adults, our immune systems protect us by calling on a library of past infections. But when we're babies, that library is empty. Now, this isn't because a baby doesn't have their own immune system yet, like many people are taught. It's because for the first few months after they're born, a baby actively keeps its immune system turned off to create an opening for the body's first microbes to move in. And our mothers give us our first dose. The trip down the birth canal seeds a newborn with many of their first microbes, but in some countries, a quarter to half of babies are born by C-section instead of vaginal birth. And these babies' first microbes naturally resemble what's on the skin instead. Well, this isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it's definitely different than how it's been for most of history. But the biggest influence on an infant's inner inhabitants is our most mammalian trait of all breast milk. Milk is one of nature's most amazing liquid innovations. It's full of energy for growing brains and bodies, but the baby's not the only one getting fed. The third most abundant ingredient in human milk are complex sugars called oligosaccharides, but newborns can't digest these. Why do mothers waste good energy filling breast milk with undigestible stuff? It's food for microbes. Those sugars pass all the way to the large intestine where they meet a special bacterium, which, by the way, was also donated by mom. This single microbe can make up 90% of the bacterial population in an infant's gut, and it loves to eat HMOs. They digest those complex molecules and in return feed the baby special fatty acids, even donate a nutrient needed in growing brains. Later, when we switch to solid food, these bacteria become minor players, but they play a starring role early on. Those sticky, tangled sugar molecules also act as a physical defense, tangling up dangerous invaders in a kind of defensive glue. Breast milk is even loaded with bacteria killing viruses, ready to target the bad guys and leave good microbes unharmed. Now, infants that drink formula clearly grow up fine. Just like C-section versus traditional birth, formula isn't bad, it's just different. And scientists want to know if these subtle differences early on can lead to big effects later. And we find examples of parents passing down microbes throughout the animal kingdom. Before a bee wolf wasp mom leaves her egg, she lines the nest with a sticky white paste secreted from her head. As the larva matures, special microbes in the paste secrete antibiotics to keep the nest free of infections. When it's time for baby koalas to give up milk and start eating eucalyptus leaves, their mother releases a fluid called PAP from, well, 
let's just say it's not from her mouth. Now, the youngster eats this right up. It's full of microbes that the koala needs to digest the leaves. It's clear that these first doses of microbial life are some of the most important. Some of them take up residence to nourish and protect us, and some of them just pass on through to help our bodies learn friend from foe. But for most of the microbes that live in and on us, we still don't know how they interact with our own cells or each other. What is clear is that without them, we wouldn't be us. Stay curious. This episode of It's Okay to Be Smart was supported by Audible.com. Right now, Audible is offering our viewers a 30-day trial. Just go to audible.com slash OK to access all their audio programs and titles. This week, I want to share I Contain Multitudes, a new book by Ed Yong about the science of the microbiome. This branch of science goes way beyond humans. I learned even animals like squid and bumblebees have microbiomes. It tells the story of how scientists first discovered bacteria on our bodies and how we came to accept that most of them are our friends and what today's scientists are learning about how the microbiome affects our health. You can check out that title and others by going to audible.com slash OK. Make sure you use that link to help us out and to get a membership trial. Uh, Alex, I'll take potent potables for 200, please. I may move slow, but my venom can kill you in minutes. Joe. What is a cone snail? That is correct. I'll take potent potables for 400, please, Alex. Whether it's Mortal Kombat or my venomous tail, play against me and you could see a fatality. Joe again. What is a scorpion? Yes. Uh, potent potals for 600, Alex. 